Okay, good. All right, so we are live currently. Let me make sure this is good. And it's going to start broadcasting in the group in a second. All right. All right, so we can go ahead and get started now. Without further ado, thank you, Laura, for working with uh, me through technical difficulties and for joining me tonight sure. on this live pop-up interview uh, to discuss mm -hmm. all things experiential marketing. EXPs, thank you guys for tuning in as well um, to this interview. If you have any questions that you want to ask um, Lauren, definitely drop them in the comments and we will be sure to go ahead and get to them and address them throughout the interview. Uh, let me turn this into the watch party with them really quick. Happy to be here and help. Yes. So, there we go. Okay, we're good. Okay. So, Lauren, without further ado, go ahead and just let us know. Uh, well, tell us a little bit about All Aces and how you began your agency and begin your career as an ESP. Absolutely. So I started my career in the field as an EXP as well. I was in college and I just kind of stumbled upon brand ambassador work where um, I think my first ever gig was passing out um, flyers outside of an Aerosmith concert. And I loved it and I had so much fun and I developed a really great relationship with the owner of the company um, there at the time. And I was managing programs and I was basically going to school like when I was working because I just loved what I was doing so much. So when I graduated, I decided to see if the companies that the people that I had that had worked with in Boston where I went to school needed help in New York where I lived and vice versa. And fortunately, I got a really good response from having really great relationships and all ACES was born. And I kind of really good, took it little by little, step by step from there. Mm, so working as an EXP and starting mm -hmm. your career that way, like what are some things that um, you learned along the way that has assisted you in starting, you know, your agency? Absolutely. So one thing, I guess, issues that happen now are like there are certain things that are just kind of, you know, just normal. So I, there were issues being paid on time. There were issues with miscommunication with account managers getting wrong details. So, you know, after facing some of those issues, those are some of the things that I kind of had decided when I started my agency that those were going to be the foundation on which I built things on. Really good, clear communication, making sure to, teach, to treat people with respect, and really focusing on those relationships with the staff and paying people on. Because I know that ultimately the people who are working these events they are the whole business. Now, without EXPs, we don't have a company. There's no there are no successful programs, and so that's really you and I. What I really drill into my team and really motivate them to do. It mm, that's good. So, when you first started your agency, mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about that. Like, how long have has All Aces been around, and what was you know, some of the um, the things that you had to learn along the way with starting your own, you know, promotional and staff agency, hiring, you know, EXPs in the field. Oh, goodness. I learned everything along the way. Um, so I started the company 12 and a half years ago. So I started it pretty shortly outside of college. So I had never had a quote unquote real job. I never walked in an office. And so there were just a lot of learning from an actual business perspective that I really needed to learn things like payroll and all the little administrative tasks and whatnot that goes into running the actual company. So there was, there was a lot of learning along the way when it came to things like that. Mm. Yeah. And then staffing um, and you know retaining clients over the years, mm -hmm. how, um, how have you been able to do that you know, with your, your staffing agency? And sure. just making so, sure that you're able to consistently, you know, uh, staff mm -hmm. ESPs. 
Sure. So, I mean, for us, loyalty is really a big thing, right? So I, the foundation of the whole company is based on relationships. I, it's in our company mission, it's our top core value. It's something in every team meeting that I have that I really you know, remind my team is relationships, you know, relationships with EXPs, relationships with our clients, and relation and having really good relationships with each other because when you have those strong relationships that's where successful programs happen and that's how we wind up retaining our clients so i like to say that we have a bottom up approach where for me the main focus really is um, is making sure that everything is great with the people who are for us a lot of people may say that sounds a little counterintuitive but it really isn't because if things are if things are solid with your team, then it's just going to leave going to result in a successful program. And then clients will be happy and because things are organized and then it it results in VP business and then people who do a really great job for us are going to get first priority. So that's really what I have strongly feel has made us so successful. And that's something that, you know, there are plenty of clients that we've been working with for five, six, seven plus years because of that. And six with staff, you know, we love to work with the same people who, who do a great job. And I know some people will often say, and not only our company, but with other agencies, I've applied to so many jobs, um, but, but I haven't gotten hired. And I say to people who, who say that, but Keep, I hate to say keep applying because I do feel bad because I wish I could hire everybody and my, and my team does too, but just know that when you actually do have that opportunity and you are hired to work because when we have programs that are a little bit smaller and many times I will request specific people over and over. So you may see an opportunity come up, but it's one that was already filled because we already knew who we had to hire. But just making sure that your profile is up to date, making sure that your pictures and your information and your bio are really informative. Your, you can see your t-shirt size, so we don't have to ask you for it. Those are really key things that really help the account managers when it comes to hiring a new team. Because we love to hire new features. We need to the team. There are times where we have to hire 150 people we need a million new faces and that's a really great opportunity for us to bring new people on board. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit and I'm going to pull up some of the comments um, okay. from other EXPs um, mm -hmm. that are uh, posting. Someone said, I love working with all ACEs. So that was a comment from someone um, that's watching the video. But I wanted to just talk through that for a minute as far as okay. um, your process and how you guys go about staffing EXPs. Mm -hmm. Do you hire in every market? Are there some markets um, where you have more work than others? Because I know a young lady said, hey, you know, you don't, I'm moving to Atlanta. I don't see that you guys have a lot of work in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So what, um, for anybody out there that's looking, you know, for opportunities with all ACEs, what mm -hmm. would you recommend that they do, first of all? And then two, what are some of your most popular markets um, that you hire? Yes. Sure. So we we are national, of course. You know, some markets do tend to get more work than others, and that's not always easy to predict because last year, Ohio wound up being a shockingly big market for for the ends of the year, and that was something that we necessarily could have. Predicted. It was just based on on this one particular program that a client had. So. You know, we work a lot in the major markets, of course. Lots of our work is in New York, New York, Austin, San Francisco, LA, Chicago, Miami. Those, you know, of course, we get a ton of work there. I know this year, Dallas, where we've been getting a lot of work, and we have a lot of work coming up for the fall. And a lot of times, we get a lot of things less than as well. So clients will come to us saying we we're having trouble in this market, or we you know, we decided to last minute sponsor an event over here. And so lots of times those opportunities come up where we can't necessarily predict it, 
but we do have the capabilities. And if, if you do live in a more remote, the more remote market, definitely make sure your profile is up to date because you will get first dibs very, very quickly from our team. Mm, that's good information. Sure. And one other thing I will say too, because a lot of people like to work in more than one city, but their profile only states one city. So within our portal and in most portals as well, sort of a, like a lot of the tips I'm giving are really universal things across all companies, not just us. I would say to just make sure this is where being really detail oriented comes into play, right? This is where making sure that you're able to market yourself to be able to receive the most opportunities, whether it's locations and just being really detailed where we can look at the plan and see where you're the best. Mm. So how often um, an EXP, because it kind of broke up a little bit at the end there, but oh. what Lauren said was just making sure that your profile's up to date. If you work in different markets, just making sure that you state that on your profile. Yeah. Um, let's talk about that for a minute with regards to travel. Um, and paying for a travel reimbursement because a lot of you know EXPs are like, well, I sure. would you know take other jobs in a in a market, especially where you may need somebody last minute if mm -hmm. you would pay for travel or you mm -hmm. know the first thing they ask is is travel uh, covered and mm -hmm. is that something automatic? How do you guys handle those situations where you know someone may live in a different market, but they they're looking at you know the fact that hey, I'm making. Eight twenty dollars an hour, but by the time I pay for gas, by the time I get there, it, it doesn't add up. Do you sure. guys have incentives for for those types of markets? You know, remote or rural markets. One thing everybody needs to know: how much. <laughs> oh, wait, say that again. I said one thing that everybody needs to know is how much we fight for y'all. So okay. when it comes to things like that, so when it comes to. If it's a major market or within maybe thing on the market, like within 15 to 30 miles, we may not be able to justify it. But depending on the details, the shorter shift, it is a little bit more remote, if it is a little bit more last minute, we are sometimes able to offer that. And that is something that we will typically put in a job if we're able to do that. But that's something that we really do actually get beforehand before it's even asked for because you no know, we know how hard it is to get certain areas we map them out we know um we're, we're realistic about about this mm -hmm. very much okay. Me. okay and then as far as um making sure when you're filling out either your profile or the ESP filling out their profile with all aces um, in the database, what are some things that you look for? I know, of course, headshots, you know, resumes, but how often do you, or if EXPs do, how often do you like to see them update their profiles? And when you're working with your account managers and you're training them on how to, you know, properly vet an EXP for opportunity, what are um, some of the things that you look at on a resume or when you're looking at headshots or when you're looking at, you know, references for a potential opportunity? So when it comes to updating it, I would say at least every six months, but you also want to make sure it's, it's the most important thing is that the photo looks like it. There are pictures that I know have been in our database since 2013, and it's a little bit hard. I mean, I know some, some people just don't age, and God bless them. <laughs> But, you know, for the most part, if, um, you know, we know that if, it, if, if somebody if somebody has a picture from years ago and then on site their hair is a different color or they just don't resemble their picture, it's going to create an issue with a client. So I would say every six months is definitely... Say, say, that, oh no, say that part again because it broke up. You said if they oh, change their hair color and then... Do you have any like headphones or anything? Yeah, let me grab some. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> this is good info. Okay, someone else said, uh, asked the question. They wanted to know generally what was your turnaround pay process, but we'll get to that um, sure. as well. But, uh, let me just collect these bad boys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
and exps if you're just joining um go ahead and drop any questions or any um comments that you have below yes perfect awesome yes yes so, sorry what was the um what was so the we were talking time? about uh, red hair changing your hair on your profile <laughs> and um not changing your profile pictures and then showing up with different hair and then the clients right. so how they and, receive and it right and that's one of the things that really discourages you know, when it comes to opportunities in general, clients sometimes decide whether or not to continue with experiential programs or street teams or conferences or even using outside help instead of their internal team based on the success of one particular event or activation. So if they have a bad experience where they were expecting, you know, they wanted somebody with curly hair and they were super excited and then somebody shows up with a little pixie cut, you know, even though that may not necessarily be a big deal, you know, it's some it's something different than the client was expecting. If it's for let's say it's for a hair product where that is important or somebody says that they have let's say they're representing a technology company and then they don't actually have the experience or the knowledge that they seem to do it not only represents health but represent and as well as the company but it represents staffing as a whole um and in a very negative light and these companies that we really try to let we, we try to let them know that it's better to use an exp versus their own internal team because because we you know they have a gift for being able to not only learn talking points like your team they know how to interact with people they know how to engage how to drive traffic to the booth and how to get the messaging across and so sometimes we have to do a little bit of convincing of that um, and we do a little bit of selling on staffing in general so if there is a bad experience then it just discourages them from doing it ever again so you know that's that's good insight right there mm -hmm. Because so. EXPs on the outside looking in mm -hmm. think that it's easy to get a client, it's easy to re make, retain and keep a client. Mm -hmm. But like you said, just the, the mm -hmm. mere uh, fact of an EXP not updating their profile picture and showing up mm -hmm. looking completely different than what you guys were expecting can make mm -hmm. a break you know, a future opportunity for you guys. Yeah, it's the first impression. So first impressions, I mean, our whole industry is based on first impressions, right? It's all about experiences. Mm -hmm. So if the first experience is the client was expecting one thing and getting another, it's the same thing like, you know, going to an activation and telling, you know, demonstrating a product that's one thing and then they walk it and it's something different. The same thing. Mm. So when you guys, when when not just you, but when your account managers and your, your staff accreditors, when you guys are vetting EXPs, um, what are some of the questions that you're asking them to kind of, you know, see if they have the experience and are um, able to go out there and do a great job in the field? And when you're looking at resumes too, like, what do you look at? So for newer people that we haven't worked with, so for people that we have, you know, we we do keep track of client feedback um, and just general performance as far as reliability. And, you know, certain people are great for certain types of programs, but not others. So those are things that we keep in mind as far as people who have, um, who have worked with us before. But for somebody who hasn't, on your resume, some of the things that are important are to not only make it easy to read, I've seen just paragraphs that we, you know, with random things kind of littered in, that's a little bit hard to understand, but making it clear what brand you represent, what your role was, and what you did. So if you were a team lead, you definitely want to notate that if you did something special like a, like a mascot or um, you are a product specialist at an auto show, you want to be really detailed about those things because if that specific opportunity comes up, you will give, you'll, you will be given first priority. Okay. And page wise, it, are, are there like, you know, some, um, on <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't read past the second page. Like, I don't read five, 10, 20 pages. Like, yeah. is there a page okay. limit for you guys where you're like, um, like after the first, second page, like we don't read it or 
how do you how do you go about that situation when you have those resumes? Well, I don't know that we necessarily have a policy where someone's not going to read past a certain page, but I would say, and this is just job applications in general, try to keep two pages. Two pages. Unless it's something really relevant, you know, your cashier job in 2012 is really very relevant on there. So just keep it as relevant as possible. And I know that our particular portal actually has um has the option to have a test for resume. You can have a full resume, an actual resume, and a personal resume. So if you think of the portal, you might have resume that outlines Mm, so, so having okay, gotcha. So having multiple resumes which highlight your experience in those um, different um, areas of expertise in the industry would help instead of just having five to ten pages. If you have, if you happen to have a lot of different experience that you want to know about, then you know, that's something that would help Otherwise, you know, your insight on. In general, you know, a lot of people don't want to have two or three resumes. You know, they're trying to, try to keep it, you know, nice and short and simple. We're all about keeping it as simple as possible. Mm, okay. So, pay process um, in the EXPX, what is the usually like the, the normal or the standard turnaround um, for the industry and for all ACEs? And how do you handle, you know, any issues with pay with sure. regards to the event. Absolutely. I think we're we're one of the agencies that actively tries to pay people even when they don't fill out their paperwork. So um, so I would say so we so our payroll is every other Friday. Mm -hmm. So um, so it's every other week. So depending on how the event and when we receive the timesheets falls within the payroll, you're typically being paid every one and a half to two and a half weeks from when you finish. And if it's a longer term program, you'll receive multiple. Mm -hmm. And we are a W 2 company as well. So we're, okay. we're a W 2 request. And do you think that that you being W 2, because a lot of EXPs feel like, you know, with, with the option to be 299 is better because taxes are not taken out. And, you know, even though I'm making 20 an hour after taxes, I'm really making 18. You know, what was the the thinking behind going W-2, is it just more beneficial for you as a company versus um, Well, it's a couple of things. So I, I understand the benefit. And if you're somebody who wants to be 1099, if you have your own company with an insurance policy, you have, then you're able to be 1099. But with labor laws the way they are and just the rules the way, the way they are being um, very strict about what constitutes an employee versus a contractor, and in a lot of ways, the people, you know, EXPs, like the job description, does very much fall under an employee basis. So we kind of have to. And while on the one hand you're not seeing taxes being taken out immediately, at the end of the year, I know you can choose to not, you know, to work under six hundred dollars for a bunch of different companies, and you know that that is a loophole that you, for sure, can use to get around. But at the end of the day, you know, you have to then do the taxes and then, you know, sort it out a little bit. And sometimes you wind up paying a little bit more as a result. Plus, we also have, you know, being you know, our own well, um, you know, there's somebody who works. Programs or different like um, different types of health insurance options that like not a full scale medical plan, but there are um, there are basic policies that are available during the period that we work, and so there are other benefits to being W two. It's just peace of mind. You don't have to worry about it at the end of the year. You don't have to worry about saving your and especially because between a standard deduction with receipts, you don't necessarily get to write everything off like, like people think that you do. If your receipts don't total more than a regular deduction for anybody who's W2, then they're, they're actually useless. I don't yeah. think a lot of people know that. I actually learned that the hard way back in the day when every floor was like, you know, like, and I did not and I was in the I said, I spent, I remember spending seven hours calculating the receipts, sending it to my accountant. He said, 
you can't use this because it's not higher than the other amount. It's not use them at all. Mm. So making sure that you understand the laws for each state as an EXP, this is good information, guys. And mm -hmm. understanding what you can and you can't write off because oftentimes, like you said, if the deductions exceed what the allotted uh, write-offs are for that particular category, then you may not be able to to write off as much as you think being a 1099. Right. Mm, that's good information. So being that you are based in New York City, mm -hmm. and that's like the Mecca, one of the Meccas of being an EXP mm -hmm. and working in the experiential market industry, and you've been a part of some great programs and seen some great programs in action. What would you say um, is one of, well, not one, but the top kind of things that characteristics that you shy away from or that will not get an EXP higher with all ACEs um, that you you guys just don't don't tolerate. So I would say attitude is a very big thing. So having, if somebody seems difficult or just very negative on the phone with an account manager or just seems like they don't want to work with him, then it's something that's not, if you're, if you can, you know, if this is how you're acting with us, then we're doing our service to you in front of our client or in front of customers who, you know, as a representative of our client, us. So, you know, that's one of those things. And another thing that I have to emphasize that is sort of like, like branch off of what you're saying is the importance of submitting new taxes and actually self checking and editing them. Because as far as we work as either somebody who does um, like on or off premise or food demos or a team lead, if, if we have to spend a lot of time editing your recaps or chasing information or you're taking back photos, someone has the phone in their hand, they're, um, they have, you know, three people have sunglasses on and, you know, we see the backs of a lot of people and they're not usable photos, it makes us look bad to the client and we'll, while we may hire you for other positions, we may not necessarily hire you for those other parts of that. So recaps, event photos, let's, let's talk about that because that has not come up in any other, other pop-up videos. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big news. <laughs> so, surprised, actually. <laughs> yeah, so we talked, I mean, we've talked about spell check and making sure that you take the time to adequately, you know, proofread your um, event recaps before you send things out. But talk more about that photo area, you know, that section that you just hit on a little bit. Sure. So photo, an activation also is as good as the photos of the client, whether or not the client is on site with us. They're using the photos internally to either justify um, more events to show foot traffic or people experiencing the product or the setup of an, of an activation. So if they see a team of people who are in the photos or if let's say it's an experience program where in the background where they can see the media or if, you know, if you have to show photos of people in the background, you know, we have to show the crowd when possible to show the traffic, especially when you visit the event. And for demos, you only want a picture of you behind the table, as well as a table or how um, people set up in general, because it shows what the setup looks like, and it shows the clients. Sometimes they will really need so, the photo isn't necessarily just thing, but it actually does have to be Well, oh, can you um, hold the mic up again and say that last part? So, so the photos, okay. So the photos is not just to show to show that you are on site as well, but it does have other uses as well. That's really, you know, a lot of people think, oh, I'm on site here in the picture, but they don't realize sometimes a lot of clients using their training manuals, um, like internally, just to show, hey, you know, for the marketing, marketing, what the demo looks like, and so, um, you know, in photo will be on. Mm, okay. That's good. So just making sure that your photos are clear, 
that um, you have a photo of yourself in front of the footprint, in front of the display, mm -hmm. and making sure that consumers, you, you're not just getting the backs of consumers, but you're actually getting photos of yourself or every anybody else, any other EXPs engaging with consumers as well. Right, and you, of course, a combination of stage photos versus, um, versus, um, why can't I think of the word? Just like action just photos, natural, right? yeah. yeah, exactly. Action photos, a combination of those is, is key just to show, um, hey, here's the team, and hey, here's here are people interacting with the product. Mm, that's good, that's good. Okay, all right. So, a question I just got a question from someone, um. And they want they want to know as far as pay rates and minimums. Do you have a minimum that you try to um, stay at when you're paying yes. EXPs, or do you? Mm -hmm. Does it vary based on the program? We, unless there is potentially commission or bonuses, you never go below eighteen an hour. That is okay. that is a typical floor. I don't think in the past two years we've ever gone below eighteen an hour. Um, so. Uh, that's something that we really stress, that we stress the clients and we educate okay. them that, you know, you kind of, you know, if you want better people, you have to pay for the mm, That's good. Okay. And, we're and then, huh? I said, I said, I said, we're fighting for you. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> and have you, or are a lot of your account managers that work um, with you, have they worked in the field as well? Most of them have, and it's funny because I, it's not necessarily done on purpose, but I have found that a lot of people who have worked in the field make great account managers because they understand what makes a program successful and what the role actually entails. So mm. most of them actually have. Mm. That's good. And on average, um, how many events because i know you said you said you're busy you've been extremely busy this this uh year so on average you know on a week average how many events are you staffing and how many exps you know are you actually hiring uh, okay. on a week or month by month basis maybe yeah that, that that could vary but i would say um anywhere from on a given week this week we have nine or ten activations happening this week and some of them are just one person activations. I know we have a couple that are bigger teams. I think we have one really big one happening. So um, you know it, it all depends. I know I mean busy season is upon us. So I know for us September through November is typically our busiest time of year and we have a lot already in the books for, for that time period, not including all the the last bit of stuff that, that always winds up popping up. So definitely make sure you check your emails, texts, notifications, and everything to, you know, when it comes to applying. Okay. And then how long has All Aces been around? Twelve and a half years. So with 12 and a half years, you, you guys got a lot of skin in the game. And you've seen the industry evolve from you know, mm -hmm. not even having a term experiential marketing and just calling it pro a promo model mm -hmm. or doing promotions. Right. So now we have where the game came from <laughs> promotional staffing instead of event staff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay. Uh oh. Okay. okay. I got where, you. Where were you saying? Um, no, I, I was just agreeing with you. I was saying, I was saying that's even where you know the, the term promotional staffing in our name came from because that was the term at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so seeing, it, seeing it evolve from that to now having a full-on experiential marketing title and brand ambassadors and product specialists, you know, what are some of the things that has been able to sustain all Aces? and um, assisted you guys in being, you know, one of the leaders in the industry for 12 years, you know, and counting. So I'm always going to go back to what I said earlier, relationships. Relationships with staff, relationships with clients, maintaining a really good cohesive team internally. And, you know, really, I think we would like kind of hold it together because ultimately, I mean, it's, it's a small, small world, right? You know, like mm -hmm. people, 
you know, every person is working for lots of different companies. So it's all about how you motivate people to do a good job, how you work them to go well, and the relationship that you keep with all the talent and clients, and really just the passion to do well. You know, people can tell when you care, um, both on the client and in the staff end, and it makes a difference in my in my experience. Mm, that's that's good information and and it's funny because you know more people are starting to enter the industry and wanted to learn more about obtaining opportunities and working with different agencies and more staffing um, agencies are starting to pop up and a lot of exps are transitioning into you know well i i think i can do a better job than this agency or you know, I've been in the industry long enough and I understand what it takes to have a staffing agency and staff EXPs. So let's just talk about that for a minute. Like what do you say to an EXP who's thinking about, you know, going down that route and taking that journey of having their own staffing agency? Well, it's definitely harder now than it was because of employment laws and all those different things. And a lot of people think it's as simple as, oh, I know people and I know companies that need people. And so I can start a company. That's essentially how I started mine, to be honest with you. And it took a very long time and a whole lot of learning before I was able to actually get it to a point where it was a fully functioning business. So just really understanding all of the nuances, everything from payroll, insurance, um, just every business aspect, uh, you know, money, of course, is something that agencies get paid official up front, and we get paid very quickly, and we're just holding out, but that very much is not the case. So um, just, just expecting that, that um, all the the hurdles that you don't even think of. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. And then too, now, if what is something that you wish you would have known when you first started your agency um, that you know now, 12 years later? Hmm. Not to do everything myself um, <laughs> in the beginning. That was probably the biggest thing. But also, um, yeah, I think, I think that's the biggest thing. Um, that and just knowing what a functioning company looks like, mm. you know. Yeah. yeah. And how are you able to keep EXPs happy? Because because um, agencies come and go. You know, there's an agency today, and then a couple years from now, they um, either go bankrupt or other matters happen, and they no longer exist. So what do you think is the key? I think one of the keys that you hit on um, early on is the fact that you worked in the industry and you have people that are account managers and staff coordinators that have worked in the industry. So having that relationship and knowing an EXP, knowing that they are speaking to someone who understands their pain points mm -hmm. in the field, that's extremely important to me, especially when I'm working with an agency. So what do you think, you know, outside looking in are some of the things that has been able you know, has allowed you to keep EXPs happy and keep consistent EXPs and keep EXPs from getting mm -hmm. job, you know, coming in and being able to work because you employ such good people. So mm -hmm. what do you what do you say to the EXPs who I mean, what do you what do you think, you know, sure. is one of the things that you've been able to do? I mean, I hope we're keeping them happy. I mean, I, you know, it's definitely our goal for sure. And I think, um, I mean, I think it's just, it comes down to treating people with respect and paying on time. I think that's probably the biggest thing of it all. And I know I, 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 keep, I keep kind of boiling it down to relationships because we have, we have great technology. We, you know, we have, we, we have a lot of other checkpoints that the other agencies do. And I'm not saying that other agencies don't focus on relationships, but that for us is our biggest core value. Is that. And I think the fact that we always, you know, we don't take for granted the job that EXPs are doing in the field and we really fight for them a lot as far as um, making sure that we that we're as organized as possible. It's, you know, sometimes 
when if an agency seems unorganized, it's not always the agency. A lot of times it's the client. Um, just, you know, um, it, it's not always the agency. So, um, you know, I think it's just, I, I would say that that's probably the biggest People knowing that we care, that we care, and that we appreciate them, and we're going to pay them on time, and and keep friends for people. <laughs> and that's the main thing to maintain consistent mm -hmm. opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, and every EXP, you know, especially when they're working for agencies, they want to feel valued, they want to feel appreciated, and they want to feel like you know, I I wasn't just you know hired for this event and no longer work with me or no longer you know, hire me anymore. You know, they want to feel value, even if it's just a one-off gig for a last minute remote city, you know, sure. mm -hmm. we, we count as well. And yes, you know, that's been, that's been expressed, you know, to me from a lot of EXPs and not feeling yeah. like the agencies really appreciate, you know, the job that they're doing in the field. Sure. So yeah, I know a lot of, I know a lot of account managers, you know, it's, it's a very tough job. Uh, you know, kudos to my whole team internally who are managing the programs because they go through a lot. And that's and that's another thing that I will say has been that I've seen change. Um, you know, one thing I will request a PXP, and if you want to know how you get selected right over, you are reliable, and if you are, if you apply to a job. You know, don't cancel last minute and just make sure you're allotting time to be there um, at least a couple minutes early. I know 15 minutes is always the rule. A lot of people don't like being 15 minutes early. If, as long as you're there a few minutes early and you're ready for everybody's happy. So our account managers go through a lot trying to make sure the program is successful. And there's we get so many applicants, you know, for most of the cities that we work in. So, you don't show up, you really are taking away an opportunity for somebody who does make the money. So, kind of, you know, just be mindful of it. I think mm. it's really, really important. And that leads into my next question because my last question was going to be what do you we talked about the bad so what do you look for so the one thing you said is making sure that you're reliable you show up on time um if you don't want to come 15 minutes late which is my rule of thumb at least a few minutes early so that a few minutes early and ready to work and if you're not going to show up or if you you know plan on canceling you are taking an opportunity from away from someone else so just be considerate of that so those are like two things so what is one more thing that you you know look for and that you keep in mind sure. uh, when you are hiring so I'm going to consistently like looking sure. to consistently hire sure so i'm going to come to a two-parter because um there are two that i think are really really important so um just when you just having like a really positive passionate attitude like when you're working just wanting it to be a successful activation because both we and clients can tell when you're just owning it in and it doesn't you know we have to justify clients paying people a high rate because a lot of clients are saying, why don't we just go on Craigslist and hire somebody for minimum wage? And right. if somebody doesn't, somebody just shows up and is, you know, kind of blah, it kind of, it kind of proves their point that they could have just done, they could have just done just that. And so just really proving that you really care. And, you know, and to that point, if you're not passionate about something and you don't, don't think you can bring that energy to a specific program for any reason, then that I'd be from for you. And then just being the last one is just being, paying attention to details and reading your book of emails. Um, okay. Lots of times mm. I know my you know our account is very, very detail oriented and very thorough when it comes to text and email communicating details. So somebody you know when somebody is paying attention, and so it just makes both you and the person look bad when when you don't pay attention to the mm, So little details matter. And just making sure as an EXP uh, that you take the time to read everything and review everything and ask questions. Mm -hmm. mm. You dropped some gems tonight, Missy. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yeah, I'm glad. <laughs> so, so EXPs, if you want to sign up to work 
um, mm -hmm. any events with all ACES promotional staff in. Lauren, tell them how they can do so. Sure. So um, you can go to acespromo.senegalsoftware.com. And I know that's a mouthful, so I believe you're going to type it or put it somewhere. Yeah. I'll, put it in, I'll put it in the comments as Perfect. well. Perfect. Awesome. We And for those who have worked with us, we actually did recently this year migrate to a new system. So if you feel like you haven't been receiving notifications, just make just kind of look out um, for your spam folder in case it's coming from someplace different. But the key thing is when you want to sign up um, and we kind of take out some of the guesswork for you when it comes to making sure that your profile is complete. For us, we require all of the areas that to us is a complete profile. So just make sure you fill out everything that's required uh, in order for it to actually be submitted. And then you're essentially good to go at that point because we make sure that once your profile is in that, um, that, that you're okay. Mm. And then is there like a waiting period to get their profile approved? Or is it instantly approved? It's, it's, it's um, somebody from the team does approve it. So it's usually within a day, like within one business day. Okay. I should say. Okay, and then they'll just start getting notifications. They can choose when they want to receive job notifications, like via text or email, or is it all email? Exactly, it's text or email, and I believe the app, there actually will be an app. Uh, I was supposed to launch end of June, but we all know how that goes, so, um, so very soon there will be an app as well. Oh, good. And do you guys, okay, so you guys don't work with like pop bookings or anything? Everything's done no, internally. It's similar. So it's a, it's a similar type of a platform. There are but it's just, it's just all, a, oh, there are, will be other agencies on your platform as well? Well, other agencies use the platform, but it's not connected like pop bookings, so. Okay, okay, cool. So it'll just be more um, all ACES related job opportunities. Right. Cool, okay, and then as far as their paperwork, will they, once their profile's approved, will they be filling out their paperwork, their W, not their, W-2 paperwork and all of that at that point, or will it be after, you know, they're confirmed for their first opportunity? It'll be once you're confirmed for your first opportunity. And okay, it's all good. digital, so even though it's um, a very thorough W-2 process, it's all digital and very mm, Okay, that's good to know. All right, so I'm going to drop that link in the okay. comments for EXPs to sign up um, to, to click through and sign up with for opportunities in their area. But aside from that, I always like to uh, end on something fun. So outside of managing this company mm -hmm. and dealing with EXPs on a day-to-day -day basis, what do you do for fun? So one thing um, that I actually started doing almost a year ago is Kung Fu, Ooh. actually. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> I like, yeah, so I, I do Kung Fu. I'm a big rocker, so I love rock music and cooking and, you know, just being outdoors. So, yeah, those are, those are some of my fun facts, yeah. When you're not, when you're not dealing with people. But I, I'm pretty exactly. sure you, the great thing about working on industry is that you are exposed to so many different things and events. Right. So, mm -hmm. you stay in the know of what's going on. And that's, exactly. that's pretty cool, too. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you for tuning in tonight. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to talk with the EXPs to provide your insight sure. and feedback. EXPs, if you have any other questions, feel free to drop them in the watch party in the comments and I'll filter them to Lauren and tag her so she can answer them as well. And like I said before, I'm going to provide um, the link to sign up for any opportunities with all ACEs as well so thank you guys all for tuning in special thanks to lauren for taking the time tonight and uh yes uh, all right let you go now but thank Great you chatting. happy to answer any questions and definitely definitely fill out our profile we have a lot of really fun stuff coming up and we're always looking to add you know great new enthusiastic people to the team yay all right Bye. <laughs> thank you thank you you're welcome all right. So let me end my watch.